Oh, hey, folks. Welcome back to Ungroundable, the podcast. Uh, usually my mom's here, but unfortunately she's sick. So we're really going to be able to dive in and tell all the secrets that never were revealed today with our guest, Jessica Badafugo. Not only is she one of the funniest humans I've ever, ever met in my life, but she also happens to be my best friend. And boy, do I feel lucky for that. Today we're going to be talking about uh, shitting our pants in public and so much more. So uh, <laughs> let's get to it. You guys are going to have a great time because uh spoiler alert i had the best time if your parents only knew of the shit you used to do you'd be grounded for a long, long time yes jesse b welcome thank you thank you it's so good to be here clapping um, and snapping with my bestie Always. So many things to say up front. One, mom is surely so upset that she's not here. Oh, of send all my love to guests. Jen. Of I all know. guests. But I'm but kind of relieved what? because I was afraid of, because my own mom's not here to like confess this stuff to. And I was afraid of Jen's like disappointment. So it's kind of a blessing. Well, Jen will definitely be egging it on is what she will be like. The yeah, more the would. merrier in terms of like bad shit. Um, yeah, and we will would. be sure to send this to your mom promptly after. Oh, boy. So watch it while she's on the treadmill. She at the knows. Gym. She knows. She knows. She knows. Uh, she knows everything. She's always known. She knew it before I knew it. Well, I we will get to the stories in a second. But like, do you think she knows these stories? Oh, 100%. I mean, I am honestly really? completely transparent with, like, everything I have ever done in my life. Like, 100%. from the start or, like, like later in life? Like, just chilling, later. like, at dinner or you tell your Girl, mom. later in life, once I lost my mind and went into recovery and started to have to just, like, tell the truth, like, in all of my affairs. So, like, that's what that, I started coming clean then. But even then, it's not that You bad. just laid it on her. Oh, yeah. I well, mean, it's all relative, kinda, right? She was kind of, like, busy and, like, addicted and like doing other things so it was like she wasn't really even at the time like aware of what was going on even if I did tell her she wouldn't believe it because I was so good at laying the foundation that I am perfect and I would never do uh -huh. that and Jesse would never do that like even though I was doing all of it and your brother was trouble too well he was the main trouble that's why I was able to get away with everything because like he was literally doing everything and he's not like my father he cannot lie Whereas I'm a very good liar. And so he was getting caught left and right. So I just learned how not to do what he did uh, and then get away with everything. But I also wasn't I as didn't, like, risky as he was. He was a little more risky. He'd like sneak out and go to the city. I didn't realize that he, I knew your brother could get himself into some trouble. I didn't realize that he couldn't lie. Right. That's a, he, that's a funny, like dichotomy. Dichot right? Is that the right word? That's why always getting in trouble. My mother was like, when are you going to learn? Like, And I was just like, I don't understand why you can't lie better. Figure it out. It's called acting. You guys are probably a good team because you could pull off the lie and he could pull off the crime. I feel like sometimes that happened, but there was too much competition between us where I was narc city. I was like, did you see Paul's temporary tattoo that's been there for a month? <laughs> like, ah! You little shit. I was a bitch like that. I needed to be perfect. I was like, you know, I come from trauma. So my response uh -huh. was perfectionism. And so anything that got in the way of that um, was a problem. So I just, you know, I knew how to play people, manipulate people and throw people under the bus. Oh, my God. That's <laughs> fascinating. I actually think of all guests, we haven't heard that point of view in terms of the kid who, like, knew how to be perfect on the outside, but was causing, like, the trouble I behind the scenes. stirring it all. I was creating it all. And then be like, not me. I know, right? Oh, my God. That's <laughs> so funny. I'm trying to think. Okay, yeah. so for people that don't know, Jessica and I have known each other since what? We were... How old were we? 13. How old were you? When I moved to California in eighth grade, we met shortly after that doing community theater together. We sure did. I remember doing a slumber party with you. Who's oh, yeah. Party? Cast party. It was like Cast a chorus parties. line slumber party moment. Yes, we were like yes. practicing our group numbers. Yes. And we made uh, t-shirts in the back. Like I have such, a specific, sure uh, such a specific memory about that. Oh, so Yes. And that's when we became friends. And I'm trying to think just like... Um, are you the instigator of the group like you were as a kid who, like, 
can get like rally up the group and get us all like doing crazy shit. And the truth is, yes, you are. And that's why you're you're the glue to the group because you always you always bring on the good time and make us all feel like we can like have a good time when you're around. And I think that's an awesome skill of yours. Well, I appreciate that. And I think too, because like I'm in it to win it too. I'm not just getting other people to do it. Like I'm doing it also. And I'm usually doing oh, it yeah. first, so like, let's go. But you could talk your way out of anything. Like you, sometimes you can drop bombs on people and say like the craziest shit that I feel like if anyone else were to say that, like people would be like mad, but you like get away with it. And I guess maybe this stems from your childhood and now it's all making Absolutely. sense to me. I would say now that I've worked on myself and don't feel the need to lie to people, um, I don't exist that way anymore. But for a majority of my life, lying was just second nature. And so like coming up with like excuses was easy. It was like improv, but like committing to it, like that's the thing. Like people will believe anything you say if you just commit to it, no matter how crazy it is. Plain and simple. But you'll and so even just... say you'll even say like funny, crazy. Like you're you're truly one of the funniest. This whole podcast is me just telling you how much I love you. But um, <laughs> truly, like one of the most naturally quick witted, funny people I've ever met in my life. And like that's yeah. hands down the truth. And you say some of the funniest shit to pe- like to random people, like you know, a waiter, or whatever. That I feel like. If anyone else were to present that line, it would never come out as charming and peaceful as it is from your mouth. Do you know what I mean? Like you Thank say you. something, yes, it's I wild. Do. You get yes. away with the craziest stuff. It's hysterical. Like, anyone else, their foot would have been in their mouth and they would have wanted to like melt and recede back That's into right. the universe. Where That's I'm right. just like, yeah, honey, I said it. And here's another one. It's because I grew up with a gaslighting father and that's how you do it. You, you do really something, they won't believe and the you trauma. do it again. You turn the trauma into like pure joy comedy and you have made it work for yourself. And it's I my think thing. join my workshops on Wednesdays at 730. Oh, what's the workshop? I don't know. I'm just hitting me now. The inspiration's coming. So I guess we'll have to talk about that later from trauma to. I don't know. We'll figure it out in post. It's not about me today like that. This is your show. Uh, well, it's our show now. Baby. It's our show. <laughs> well, it is because I do think now it will all like turn around because to be able to really like benefit as a listener to and just as me as an interviewer to benefit from these stories, it's really great to get this background on your childhood because it sort of informs us. It's basically setting the scene for what these sto- where these stories live. So um, to know how you grew up and how your how you acted is now going to inform these stories. Do you know what I mean? You're setting the tone. So tell us like a little bit more about like your hometown and sort of your friend, friend circle and all that, just so we kind of can see the picture. Well, it was interesting because as I was like trying to recall stories and like funny stories and stuff, like I was looking back, I was like, damn, I like, I actually don't have many. (laughs) Like bitch came from trauma. And um, it's kind of remarkable to think that, because of all of the nonsense, if people are not familiar with my name, you can Google it. It's spelled B-U-T-T-A-F-U-O-C-O. A whole bunch of shit comes up. My parents were infamous figures of the 90s and took over the true crimes um, like landscape. And so my existence on Earth since nine years old has been this like unreal reality show. Um, mm. And that's like interesting. Before to reality through. shows even existed. So you had no point Correct. of reference. Right. You had no so fucking point of reference. I am literally swimming my way through it. I do not have a mentor. I do not have a therapist. I do not have a community group to go to of like, hey, your parents are famous. This is what you do now. So like none of it. So I wound up, uh, you know, coping a lot of different ways. But like, it's interesting because humor has always been on on a big part of that. Um, and, and performance and acting and singing and dancing. For me, that was on a way to like escape and like do things um, differently than, than where it came from. But it's interesting because a lot of your past guests on this show are like legit comedians, performers, like people. And I was getting a little self-conscious before coming on here because I was like, I mean, I know I'm like funny and like Lisa's my bestie and I can probably do it, but like, can I do it? I also don't have that many funny stories. All of my stories are just me being alone by myself and almost killing myself by accident. Like, <laughs> See, <not> already <laughs> funny, already <laughs> funny. Hilarious. And I'm just like, uh... I mean, I stole a pog slammer once and I didn't even really steal it. I just changed the price tag. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Reverse. Hold <laughs> that for one. I don't hold that for one second. 
<laughs> you got to hold that because I have so much to say about pogs. But first and foremost, you're a host. You're a comedian. Dude, you used to do stand up. I don't I think guess. you like. No, you are too hard on yourself. And I think it's a general like thing about people in general, like are so hard on on themselves and like don't give themselves enough credit. Jessica straight up is like, I'm going to try stand up, goes and takes a class and then fucking does the circuit. Like you were, <laughs> where'd you go? You were at the like comedy store Who and wants like a joke. Who wants a joke? Nailing yeah. it. Doing cartwheels on stage. Oh I mean, my God. You um, certainly are not giving yourself enough credit just because you're, you know, not actively on television at this exact moment or whatever the case well, does you. not diminish all that. Now, going back to Pogs, <laughs> if you don't know what Pogs ah! are, were you up? Pogs were like a collectible item. In well, the, what, what was that? Too that early or was that 90s? early 90s, 90s, early 90s for sure. Like 91, 2, 3, 4, maybe. Um, and okay. actually I started like a pog gambling ring. You're bringing me back now to where like I would host like pog tournaments at lunch and I would just come up on everybody's pogs. And then like eventually a, a notice had to go home to everybody because pogs were those like little circle discs yes, that like you stack on each other and then you take a slammer and whatever fell off you win and like you go. And, there was, like, and they were like different ones. characters and stuff. It was kind of like collecting like Pokemon, Pokemon. cards. Correct. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And yeah. so um eventually like I'd roll up with like twos and twos and twos <laughs> of fucking pogs at lunch. And eventually <laughs> they had to outlaw it because I was fucking slaying bitches and like letters went home and like letters were written to my parents. Like Jesse stole Sammy's expensive pog thing. And I was like, he I didn't steal it. I won it. It was the teachers did not understand. The they did not he understand. Didn't understand. Right. So I guess I've been up to a lot more sneaky shit than I remember as a child. What You're kind really... of school? What kind of school were you in? That was elementary? It was like a public school in New York. Okay. Did Nothing you have the same fancy. group of friends or it was just like you kind of rode solo? I did. And there was three other Jessicas. And I just remember it constantly being a competition of me trying to be the best Jessica. And then when fucking baby Jessica fell in the well... Oh, I was pissed. I think pissed. I remember you telling me that. I was like, how is this bitch on the cover of people? She can't even act, sing, or dance. <laughs> Wait, if there's going to be a Jessica on the cover of people, it's going to be me. I am baby Jessica. <laughs> oh my. You try to shove yourself down a well. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it ain't working. Speaking of which, and then we'll jump back into your stories because I can't wait. Today I read an article about a chick or a woman who was abducted like 63 years ago. Did you see this, Jessica? No. She was ad abducted by someone who was posing as a um, babysitter. Mm. 63 or something like, don't quote me on that, but like 50 to 60 years later, they discover, she somehow discovers her true family and they're reunited. Oh, so what? much trauma, so much so, stuff is Oh, my God. On. I mean, like, what a, like, what do you, what a trip. Do you even, wow. What a there's trip. There's so much to unpack there, girl. What, like, I You got to mourn the life you could have had. Ooh, girl. See, I'm a therapist Oh, and for now, the parents. People. Oh, my God. I'm training God. to be a therapist, so that's where my mind goes now. But, oh, yeah. Um, but yeah bonker. Man. Bonker sauce. Anyways. Wow. Um, <laughs> So, uh, the pog thing where you're saying you switching the tag of the price thing, this sounds familiar because I feel like I might have done that once or twice where you like put a different price tag on. Yeah. It's like the only thing I've ever stolen. And it was like so scary and 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 traumatic, like thrilling, but also like I can't ever do that again. But I needed Too the stressful. Pog it was gold and it had a hologram uh -huh. skull and crossbones, bitch. Uh -huh. I needed it. Yeah, you did. And that's how you dominated. It. I see and I'm a lot like my father. I can steal and I can lie and I can manipulate. <laughs> but we're using it for good. Okay, so. Fuck yeah, I can't. Wait. So good that they sent letters home at school, bitch. <laughs> Do you oh. remember when slap bracelets got um, expelled or like you couldn't bring those to school after a while yes, too? those were too much. Yeah, very dangerous. They tried to make like a resurgent recently. They a did, and they made them at this summer camp I was working at not too long ago. And actually, like so many parents called. They're like, "My cut, my kid cut themselves on the metal inside of it." Oh my like, god! Oh, they can't even have flat bracelets. Can't have anything <laughs> nice. Um, so when we reached out to you to do this, what was your first story that you uh kind of came to mind? So I guess you know when I was looking 
at my past past and past behaviors and things like that. And I was thinking about how I'm pretty sure I gave myself like a concussion and almost died uh, because I'm an alcoholic. And even at 10, I was like doing alcoholic things. <laughs> so Wait, like, like you were boozing at 10? No. So check this out. I had figured out that if I hold my breath really hard and I make all the blood rush to my face and turn it really red and then like release it, you get the feeling of like when you first start smoking cigarettes of like, Ooh. and so I would do that a lot. <laughs> so like, you were like doing whippets essentially like human but whippets. Natural whippets. Yes. So I would do that a lot. And, but sometimes I'd pass out from it. And so like afterwards, like and so one time, I was at my beach club and actually, cause I was telling my mom about this. I was like trying to come up with stories and she didn't know this one. Um, and I was by myself because I think my dad was like in court or like about to go to jail or like, it was an important day that I was not allowed to cause problems on, you know, like uh -huh. I, it was one of those days. So like already that sets the tone of like, don't tell my mom, um, I'm going to get in trouble. I can't yeah, have this yeah. on her plate. Sure. And so, um, I had done the, you know, the turning bright red. I was by myself. It was like after swim practice, turn red, felt a little woo. And then I like went walking and I don't know why I was by myself. It was kind of early, but I walked on this like concrete kind of path. And the next oh, thing no. I remember, I was oh, just, no. yeah, I was just looking at the sun and being like, and on the ground, my head kind of hurt a little bit. And then there was sand in the back of my hair. And I was like, what the hell is this? And so then I like, got up, went throughout my day. And then all of a sudden I started getting like my peripheral vision started getting like, like, oh, I'm wah, like wah, having wah, wah, wah. an anxiety attack. And right I, I was 10, 11. I was like, this was summer going into sixth grade. So I had like, I don't know what's happening here. No one's around. I'm just like, maybe I should sit down. And so like I sat down and then like peripheral started just like, like wavy television. And then all of a sudden things started going like, black and white and spotty like when the cable oh used my to go god out. i know oh my bro. god maybe you were I like having home. a concussion yeah Did you... blown. didn't know it and so i was like maybe i should go home my head started really hurting so i was like maybe i should go home so i went home went to sleep bitch like use the high <laughs> no. went to sleep bitch like you if you hit your head you don't go to sleep like that's no. number one like so i'm doing everything like i got I, head trauma for shell went home had all this stuff pounding headache went to sleep eventually my parents came home they were just like what happened i was like oh i didn't feel good and they're like okay and i didn't realize honestly until last year that what i experienced is something called like a aura migraine or something like that and basically like your odds of dying are like 90 percent. so i was like how what happened how did nobody know? And bitch, I've had learning disabilities ever since. I had to be put in remedial reading. I, they were just like, she has a reading comprehension problem. It's like, no, I was getting high. I hit my head, but I couldn't tell anybody. And so now I've just been like, you know, learning issues my whole life. Jessica. <laughs> oh, okay. I have, uh, I got uh, so many questions here. One, when you told your mom this story recently, what was her reaction? Oh, she went like, oh, honey, I'm so sorry. She's like, I'm oh. so sorry. My life was so busy and so overwhelming that I couldn't even see that. Because she doesn't oh. have a lot. <laughs> yeah. She, oh. You know. Oh. It's like they literally came home from court that day. My dad probably got sentenced to jail. And it was like seeing me sleeping. How are you, honey? You're okay? Okay, bye. You know, like. Oh, my God. I didn't have the Wild. words to describe. Like, my, my vision is gone and my head is pounding. And I hit my head because I was holding my breath. Also, I imagine you're like protective of your mom and like not only do you want to be perfect but you want to like not add any more stress true and also my little headache is nothing compared to a bullet to the head so oh I'm man right but it is it's all relative holy crap also i've never heard this story before i feel Girl. like i've heard most of your stories that's wild and lastly i think i might have told you this and i talked about it on a pot on another episode but i electrocuted myself pretty hard um and i never told anyone i just told my mom recently about it and i think that's a the reason why I have all my stuff, <laughs> I blame it on that. Girl, <laughs> uh, wired. You went on some neurons up in there. Yes, Girl, and you know yes. I did crack my head open once uh, at in high school. Did you know this story? No. Uh, a friend of mine, we were in like theater, and it was like after school practice, and we were like being 
very dumb theater kids and we were putting on a whole performance for everyone, which included singing Tonight Tonight from West Side Story. Oh, and a lovely we medley. Sat, a oh, lovely medley. Gorgeous. Sat on the banister together, arms around each other, you know, like trying to like be romantic, sliding mm-hmm. down. And we both fell backwards onto concrete stairs he was nimble turned around caught himself i slammed back and like cut my head open on concrete stairs in high school Did in front of stitches? dude staples they took me away on staples? a gurney took me away on a gurney and my parents like came to school and i was like on a gurney like traumatized How like everyone in the theater department <laughs> crazy but the reason why i bring this up is one, that rendition of West Side Story was wonderful. But two, I saw the star. I had the star moment. And I know exactly what you're talking about. Everything kind of went in slow-mo. Like I, like the fall was in slow-mo. And everything kind of starred and dark. Like, I, I think you were probably concussed. Oh, 100% concussed. I should not oh. have gone to sleep. I should not have been by myself. I should have gone to the doctor. And this was the second time I had done this. I've done it once in second grade, too. By accident. This... That's that's how I learned how to do it. I was I was blowing through a straw. And so not a t- dry uh, T-shirt that I was painting because I wanted to do two sides, but we only had time for one. I was like, fuck this. I'm doing two sides. And so I was <sighs> trying to blow it dry. But yeah. I like, didn't realize like you need oxygen. And so I like stood up and went, woo, and I passed out and I had to get an MRI then too, bitch. Whoa. Do you have a passing out thing or you just go home? Sometimes hard? I do. When I was like going through my anorexic phase too, and like I'd stand up too quick, I'd be like, ooh, and sometimes maybe pass out. Oh my know, God. Girl. I don't know. Girl. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing we've gotten this far. Cheers I'm just to glad that. I'm fucking alive and my brain works because your girl's getting a master's degree right now, getting a 4.0. Yes. Not cheating not cheating come at me head trauma from pain to yes were you a cheater in school 100 percent. that was my next story oh perfect segue it's like i knew but i didn't it's just we're simpatico i was also well, here's the thing i think because of this head trauma mm-hmm. i was never as smart as i wanted to be like i needed a's like the world was looking at me like literally writing newspapers going through our trash like this was high stakes i had to be perfect i could not be another headline i could not be another news story or anything i was the perfect one of the family everyone else was knuckleheads but like i just wasn't smart because i fucking hit my head and shit and so (laughs) i had to cheat (laughs) and it would make me feel like shit inside but it was more important for me to look perfect and smart Uh huh. you Uh know and so um I just remember this first time it was geom. Like usually school stuff kind of came easy, like other than reading and stuff like that. But like math started really hitting me hard in seventh grade and it was geometry and it was like shapes and lines and no. angles. And I was no. like, I am barely getting two plus two, bitch. And now you're throwing <laughs> letters and stuff. No, no, no. And yeah. my teacher at the time, bless her soul, wound up being an angel. But we were so mean to her. She had survived a brain aneurysm and had oh my some God. speech problems because of it and some neurological facial problems. But us being assholes seventh graders oh, would yeah. be like, yes. this bitch is stupid. She can't teach us math. And like, totally, totally. No one was <laughs> totally. We had one of those two so mean to the teachers. So Shout mean out to Miss McMillan, girl. I'm uh, sorry. God bless. Please. God bless. She was a fucking angel. So this geometry test is coming up on Wednesday. Um, fully not knowing that this ain't happening for me. So I played yeah. sick. I went home at lunch, knowing that to make up test policy is the next day in the hallway right. by yourself. We get, so when I went home at lunch, I created my cheat sheet, like very much um, like a quarterback would have the okay. plays on their forearm moment, <clears throat> wore a long sleeve sweater, kind of like this, taped it to my arm, all obtuse, Ooh. acute. I was going to say obtuse, that's degree. all I know. <laughs> bitch obtuse is over 90 because i think of obese and acute is under 90 because it's under 90 degrees and i think that's where my body issues come from because i'm not 90 <laughs> pounds and i never will be cute and so, and so, uh, totally so I, so I tape this bitch up on here scotch tape boom boom we're going trying okay. not to crinkle trying not to crinkle uh, i come back the next day you know the drill go outside take the test boom she out there number two living my life got my cheat sheet let's go let's go Amateur hour did not hear Miss Levinson come down the hallway, and this come bitch on. was the bitch of the she, school. She was the witch. 
bitch. She was it. And I, I, yeah. I was too excited about my plan coming together so well. This has been a plan for three days in the making. And it's sure. coming together seamlessly. This bitch goes, what was that? And I was like, you know, what? <laughs> Try to hide it. What's that? Uh, it's a bad test, you know, but no, what's in your sleeve, what's in your arm. She sees it. Fuck. I immediately just like, you know, when like everything just falls and you're just like, your chest is empty and you can't (laughs) even take a breath if you want to. And like, I'm fighting back the tears because I also didn't cry ever. And so I was just like, this is it. Oh, sure. Sure. This is the, this is the thing that's going to get me on the five o'clock news. And so. I have to go, I, oh, you're you know, sweet thing. girl i know i'm like having a panic attack being like i don't it's don't tell my mom don't tell my i can't like this was high stakes for me and so miss fucking levison walked me into that class miss mcmillan and her cute crooked ass face was like i'm very disappointed in you and i was like oh my god what did i just do you know and i felt so bad and i was like please don't tell my mom please don't call the news please don't you know call the oh, newspaper and oh. she was like listen i'm going to give you another chance cuz i believe in you and i think you're smarter than this and you're better than this and i was like okay miss mcmillan i won't let you down and she let me go home and she taught me how to do a couple study tips she's the one who taught me 90 degrees of, I'm like over crying, 90 obese. i'm crying i'm crying <laughs> i'm like teacher she's the one who taught me how to like oh. put words to like things to memorize them better and i went oh. home and i memorized it and i took it the next day in front of her after school stayed after school to prove it to her and i wound up getting 100 percent on the test no cheating oh. My, I'm like I'm literally crying because teachers are amazing, and right? she. Miss oh my, so you know, they like, never the told your parents that lesson. What'd you say? Never told your parents. Never told my parents. Never told the news. And then I just never. learned how to cheat better after the, that. I just <laughs> then I moved to typing out my vocab, shrinking it down to a four font, wrapping it around a pen so it looked like a graphic pen, and then I'd use my glasses to magnify it. Oh, oh, that's a good. Okay, you know what's so funny? I do think we've talked about that before, which is, I don't know how we've gotten there before, because I used to do the TI-83 calculator, and I would write it on the back, slide it up, and recently I did, uh, Luke and I did one of these together, and he said that he did that also, so a very common one. Ah, amateur, little amateur hour. I mean, that's the first place the teacher's going to look, but I, 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 did you ever program it into the TI-83? Girl, I could barely turn that thing on. That thing was Girl, complicated. Me too, but that's why I gave that shit to Justin Brandt, who knew how to do that in third period English. I'm like, yo, put the test key up on my TI-83, bitch. Uh, Boom. And oh, we did. And we used to God. actually, in high school, um, one of the guys in our group used to go, he was the teacher's aide for our AP US history class. And so he would go in the morning and snag the answer keys and then give out a couple different versions during nutrition. And we would all just copy the answer keys and we'd be like, all right, everybody missed like two. So they don't think we're cheating. And like, boom, and like everybody passed AP US history. And the teacher was like, I don't understand how you guys are not getting A's because you're <laughs> tards in this class. Like you're not <laughs> even trying. How? What's happening? I mean, they had to have figured it out at some point. No, we never got caught. I mean, that would have been, like, it was a big operation. Like, there were, like, like 40 children were just answer keys every Friday. I mean, at that point, at that point, it's like, you know what? You figured it out. Good for you. Like, you learned how to cheat the system. And, like, that's going to get you further in life than knowing what a obtuse triangle is. Thank you. Cheaters always prosper until they get caught. (laughs) (laughs) And your mom never knew you cheated, huh? Um, no, no, because I was just so good at, like you said, even lying on the spot. Like there were times like, you know, I'd be out partying in college and then, oh, it's a paper due. When I get to class, I'm like, oh, fuck, what do I say? What do I say? How do I still get this A? And I was just like, oh, you know, the wildfires down in Southern California. Um, <laughs> oh, no. My house is by there. I had to go home and help evacuate. We have like four horses and like three chickens. Oh, my God. I just got back. I totally forgot about the paper. I'm so sorry. She's like, no problem. Do it on Friday. Turn it in Friday. I got an A. So it's like. I was I would rarely get repercussions too for this shit because I would just play it off. <laughs> Let me and tell you I what the, the horses thing is great because you don't have them, and so then you don't feel guilty about being like you know it's like oh grandma di- oh grandma my grandma died. is really sick and it's like right. ah that's kind of like bad like right. bad karma right no at that time horses we had horses, horses. We had horses oh you really did have horses I did too dusty and something else cloudy or something like that my dad had them at his stupid house. Your dad his mansion horses. house. Yeah. Oh. Did I ever go to the mansion house? Um, 
I don't know. That was like the last year in high school. That's the one the SWAT team raided. Oh, damn. Did they take the <laughs> horses? Did they take the horses? Oh, my God, Jess. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> So what else you got? I mean, I'm, I'm like, like girl, I got a list. I got I'm like, does oh. it go? Does it get any crazier than the SWAT team? That's uh, unrelated. Well, that but... was like high school. That was like actually junior year of college. So once you have like a college groundable edition, we'll do that one. But I All think right, a too. good one to tell from like early childhood is a story that like this happened. This lesson was taught to me before I could get grounded for it. Does that make sense? Ah, okay. My mom would have grounded me for it. It's something I should have been grounded for, but she just skipped past that part and just shut it down. She went, no, Ah. I'm over this. I'm over dealing with it. And what what happened was I was the queen of holding my poop in because I didn't want to miss anything. So if I'm out and playing tag and Red Rover with my friends and I felt it coming on, I would just kind of sit down for a second, let the feeling pass, hold it in there and then move on. But sometimes that would leave skid marks and my mom was sick of it. She was sick of it. I know this story. I know this story. I know this story. <laughs> this is like the epic best story. This is wonderful. Bring it home, girl. Bring it sick home. Of it. And so she, one day I get home from school, just an ordinary day, nothing special. She hands me a piece <laughs> of chocolate. Just like, here, honey. And, and with like a smile, you know, lovely mom, beautiful mom. Like, oh, my mom's giving me chocolate for nothing. I didn't even do anything good. Thanks, mom. And I literally asked too. I was like, but I didn't do anything special. She's like, it's okay. You're special. I was like, ah, we're oh, loaded. shit. I eat the chocolate. I go outside. Can I go outside and play? Yeah, honey, have fun. So I'm on the monkey bars and I feel a fart brewing. And I was like, all right, let's let it rip. And I just let it rip. And I <laughs> exploded. My oh. inside did something my five-year-old body, maybe six, had never done before. And that was completely <laughs> evacuate all bowels. And I'm hanging there and I'm just like, what? What just happened? I wasn't sick. I wasn't nauseous. Like, I just had to fart and it went, oh, my God. So I, like, get down. I think it's starting to come down my leg. I go inside. I'm like, Mom, I don't know what just happened. I went to fart and I completely pooped in my pants. And she, t- she's like doing the dishes or something. And she turns around and she goes, it's gonna come out. <laughs> and I was like, what? <gasps> it's gonna come out. And she just looked like, no, why hangers? Oh and I was my like, God. she goes, that wasn't chocolate. And I go, <laughs> what? <laughs> and all of a sudden, these feelings of betrayal. This I is mean, my first betrayal ever. This is my cruel, mother. cruel. You wonder why I have trust issues. Oh my, my mother, god! My all-time being that has never done me wrong is the ultimate. Just right now, betraying me, and so she was like, "It's gonna come out. That wasn't chocolate. It was X <laughs> And I was like, <gasps> and I was like, "Oh my! What do I do?" And she goes, "And guess what?" I go, what? She goes, you can't throw them out either. The dirty underwear. And I go, what do you mean? She's like, you're going to clean them in the sink. And she made me clean that shit in the sink. I still remember the underwear, little white underwear with purple flowers and green leaves. I like, she made me keep them, keep them in my underwear drawer. I never wore them again. I just kept them as like a memento of like, don't ever (laughs) do that shit again. And I did not eat chocolate probably until my 30s. Because I didn't even remember, like, I just remember, I'm like, I'm never having chocolate again. I'm never allowing that to happen to me ever again. And then, like, never understood why I never liked chocolate. I was, like, strawberry all day, every day. And then I was like, oh, wait, I don't like chocolate because my mother betrayed me as a child and made me shit my pants to teach me the lesson of you gotta poop. Can't hold it in. Oh, my God. (sighs) Has she ever apologized for this? She goes, I'd do it again. No, because I gave her the opportunity to apologize multiple times. And she goes, <laughs> no, you had, there was, no, I don't feel guilty. I don't feel bad. And I was like, girl, you set me up to never trust anybody in life. Why do you think I'm incapable of having intimate relationships? Yeah, because she was like, because, because you're a good daughter. Yeah. And, gives you the ch- <gasps> and you know, in that childlike wonder where it's like, it's Christmas day. You're handing me chocolate for no reason. Oh, my God. The highest of the high and then the lowest of the low. Within 15 minutes. Well, I mean, that really worked fast. That was some fast acting 
X-Lax. Fast acting my limb to X-Lax. I mean, it was traumatic. All right. Traumatic. I mean, let's be honest. Are you ever going to pull that trick on your mom in the near future? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Ah! Ah! Merry Christmas, Mom. Here's some brownies. Just because. Just for being a good great mom. mom. Oh, I mean, listen, in some ways, I'm like, okay, I get it because poop anxiety as a kid is like a real thing. Like I could not, I could not go to the bathroom in public. I like still have trouble with it. And like my mom, you still can't, I can't. I've been on vacations with you for a week and you did not poop once. Seven days, seven days. Truth. Had my mom given me x lax, I wonder if I would have gotten over my fear. Maybe. Or you might have become addicted to getting it out. Oh, I mean, it is a good feeling. People do that, too. It's a form of an eating disorder. What's the other one that they do? The enema, the coffee enemas. People get addicted to those, too, which mm-hmm. is really something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the teas. Never tried it. Wow. I mean, also, do you think that has informed our new uh, saying, which is never trust a fart over 30? <laughs> oh, my God. You can never trust a fart over 30, ever. We always say that now. The I minute will you turn 30. Lisa. I will text Lisa. I'll be like, girl. Tried to trust it. Just a friendly reminder. Don't. <laughs> and we all know what happened. I'm not saying we don't have to talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I love a poop joke so much, but that's the ultimate one. Wow, Mary Jo. Wow. Right? I have bitch. not confronted your mom about this uh, in person, but next time I see her, I'm certainly going to inquire a little bit She still stands more. by it. Like, did she give you a child's dose or did she like fucking full Oh, dose? probably like extra because she was so mad at me. You know, she was fucking <laughs> over it, dude. So she probably gave me three bars worth. That's probably why it happened so fast. Horrifying. I'm going to teach this kid a lesson she ain't never going to forget. <laughs> my mom, I wish my mom was here because what she would tell you is now complete oversharing. But because I couldn't go to the bathroom either, but not from holding, I just, I think it was anxiety. My stomach would just. Totally. My mom had to give me enemas. Oh, little baby Lisa tushy up on a mattress. And she wasn't even really a baby. <laughs> like, oh, no. it, was like, it was bad. Um, and so with that, we're going to take a quick little break for everyone to just sort of think on that. Uh, and we'll be back to read that. Uh, Jesse, if you'll stick around when we come back, we're going to read some submissions of people's stories that they've been holding on to all this time. And this is the first time they're revealing it. So amazing. We'll be right back. Hey, just want to take a quick minute to say thank you guys so much for being here. I hope that you are enjoying. Uh, as you guys know, this is a new podcast and the best way to help us grow is to rate and review it. Please spread the love by doing that. It really, really does help us. I think it's an algorithm thing, question mark. Anyways, leave us a review. Be honest. Tell us what you think. Uh, we love to hear from you. Also, we are about to share some of your stories. So if you want us to read yours, uh, go over to ungroundablepodcast.com and leave your stories for us to read here live on the podcast. Also, hello, we have a Patreon. If you didn't already know, uh, you can head over there to ungroundable pod, uh, patreon.com slash ungroundable podcast. Guys, look at me go. Uh, check it out. There's uh, stuff for all the members at all levels, including a whole nother show with me and Jeff, which is one of my favorites. Uh, I like to go over there and leave you guys some notes, pictures, early access to stuff. We also have a live show. We have live shows. I mean, come on over. It's a great time. I really appreciate you guys being here. I miss my mommy, uh, but let's get back to the show. (laughs) Uh, We are back and we are talking sparkling water. (laughs) Not sponsored, but we'd love to be. I do you think LaCroix is like overrated? A hundred percent. LaCroix is trash. No offense, LaCroix, but um, not my fave. How about a spindrift? A who? A spindrift. I don't know her. Oh, you can come over. I'll, I'll give you a spin, a spin drift. Okay, give me some spin drift. Yeah, no, I just live my soda stream life, actually. I just get those canisters and I make it at home. You make your own? Uh-huh. Oh, happy up for, for, for a sparkle, won't you? <laughs> but, like, I think I'm the only person to do it because every time I go to Staples to, like, get my tanks crossed or, like, you know, get new ones, the same <laughs> checkout person never knows the fucking code to put in. And he's like, you're the only person that really ever uses this. <laughs> I'm like, all right. 
So I'm the um, only one saving the environment. Everyone, thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Also, like I like love staples. Girl, girl, I, I love staples, and they have these giant life size cutout of Shaquille O'Neal selling printers <laughs> now. And every time I'm in there, I'm just like, shout out, Shaq. What's up, Dad? <laughs> wait what a legend honestly we were watching something the other day and a picture of him popped up and jeff was just like shack man what a legend like what a hysterical legend. great actor really really coming through on all ends full circle i missed yeah. his Oktoberfest at the queen mary out here but hopefully oh, next yeah. year I can catch it. what was that i saw the ad for it what was he it had like a haunted house on a ship in, in long beach how come we didn't go to that i know that's we ridiculous we're going next year by next the way the year. titanic exhibit has hit uh los angeles remember Let's go. i've been dying to go i didn't go with you I, I don't know where i was when you and randy went to that bodies exhibit i know it was between we were in vegas and i think you were sleeping and for some reason we woke up early or something and we're like uh we headed on over to the luxor we're like let's go to a museum because that's what you do when you're in vegas and it was between the titanic museum or the bodies and randy and i chose bodies which was awesome but also so disturbing i mean it is like it's like nauseating um, yeah we should have gone to titanic but now we can all go to titanic near far wherever you are my heart will that's go right on, babe <laughs> um all right so um on our website on groundablepodcast.com you can submit your stories uh to share here on the podcast and we got some great stories i always like to preface them by saying i haven't read these yet so we're we're reading together miss jesse b you're uh, brave the, i know i probably should uh well pod daddy rob does pull them but here no we it's go. great I have such a fear of reading out loud. I'm not good at it. It's from hitting my head, bitch. I can't do it. I can't Dude, read out loud and comprehend what's going on at the same time. Me too. And I think it's from electrocution. We're, I'm right there with you. What did you do? Uh, stick a fork in something? I I can't remember exactly, but I think I just like straight up stuck my finger into the socket in the playroom. I have I like feel such like a- you need a, a, to be holding something metal to like make the electricity go from you to the outlet. So you're probably holding Must a bobby pin or something. Or I was like trying to plug something in, but I had my fi- uh, finger into. I'm not really sure, uh, but that memory has stuck with me. Unless I like made that up, which is b- another bizarre thing, and something's wrong with my brain. Here we go. Fan submission number one. When I was six, I rubbed poison ivy all over my sister's pillow, oh. and she, she got a rash all over her face. I don't remember why I did it, but I came forward with this story. Oh, they did. Nobody was pleased. Oh, that's fucked up. That's really screwed up. First of all, too, was she like wearing a glove to be able to achieve this? Oh, if baby Jesse was doing that, I would have been full gloved, suitcase, evidence bag, you know, going when she's taking a shower. <laughs> now's the time. Burn it. Oh, yeah. 100%. That's a pretty brutal one. Did you have you ever gotten poison ivy? No, actually. No. Is it like local to L- I don't think it's like a lot. Yeah, Angeles. it exists out here in the woods, in the mountains. It's something really? about three leaves. That's all I know. Oh, is that right? Mm hmm. Okay. Not like a clover, though. But I think there's like three something. Jeff has a story. He got poison ivy, and I feel like it was like a crazy story. I'll have to. I'll bring him on uh, on Patreon if you guys want to check out my Patreon. Uh, oh, you got dot com. Yes. To watch this whole thing, you can head over there, uh, patreon.com slash ungrandable podcast to hear Jeff's story about poison ivy. But that is um really intense. <laughs> like, like that's an intense prank to play. Like we're getting I've heard into of the- some really intense pranks once. Um, I heard someone, if you want to get back at somebody, you put raw chicken in their car under their, their seat. So eventually when that just starts to decay, you can't get that smell out, bro. Good luck selling that, bro. You're gonna want to have to drive it off a of clear, collect the insurance money, bro. That you is want to really get somebody so put a gross. raw chicken in their closet under their bed Ooh, wherever you want raw a chicken. little raw chicky oh that's gonna stink and you can't get that stink out do you know in college I had this one roommate a very bizarre dude who would like get rotisserie chickens and <laughs> he would like you know eat them in his room and then he would just like leave the carcasses out oh. What do you mean? Like, like on he would table? No, in his bedroom. Like oh. he would have them around. Like he just like never. I don't know if he didn't clean up after himself, self, or if he just had an affinity for chicken carcasses. That's some girl interrupted shit. I That's know. Some I was Brittany just, Murphy girl interrupted. Shit. I was just thinking that. I was like, did I just mix my memories? But I think both of them do exist. 
Dude, college was a blur. You know what I mean? Keep smoking that weed, girl. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Um, next up, I used to sneak my boyfriend into my home. We've heard a lot of these, and I love them. He climbed the tree outside my window and come in. One night, the tree branch he used broke. He fell mm. to the ground and sprained his wrist. He ran off, and it was loud enough uh, that my dad looked outside. He didn't see my boyfriend, and to this day, my dad still doesn't know the mystery behind the broken tree ranch. I love that. That's cute. That's I know. It's kind of such a that? classic. Um, no, I, I didn't really, boys didn't really like me. <laughs> Did you, I never Please. stuck anyone in. How about you? <laughs> no, I was too afraid to have relationships and I didn't have any <laughs> boyfriends either. Nope. No speaking in for me. <laughs> we have a lot in common. Um, yeah. as we continue to learn about each other, even after all these years, we're both, yes. uh, head traumas, you know, oh. and, then, and then some. <laughs> um, do you have any final stories that you feel like you've been holding on to all these years that you feel like you need to just release? Sometimes you just got to um, release them. Let me see. I wrote a couple down. She loves oh. a list, guys. She's I a love a list, honey. I love a list. We love to be prepared. Um, love it. That's not chocolate was already told. <laughs> <laughs> I love that they all have titles. They all have titles. Um, I've got like a, I mean, this was not really fun other than my brother being a pyromaniac and me trying to construct a zip line because I was inspired by Home Alone, but nothing. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, wait, Jesse, I know one because when I first told you that I was doing this podcast, you were so gracious and um, telling me it was a good idea. And then you said, oh, I almost once burned the house down. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, I mean... Tomato, tomato. I <laughs> burnt my comforter after lighting incense once, but like it like ignited and I just had to cut it and like hide it. But this was after like I knew what to do and I knew how to do the control burn and all this because I grew up with a pyromaniac brother who would take my baby alive and like string her up on the, the swing set that I shit my pants on. Um, <laughs> and it's a very active he, swing set. Same one. Um, he would stick firecrackers in her mouth and light it. And like, he'd be holding me hostage, like Wendy, like, yes. like, like pirates, you know, like, like hook, like they, the pirates take her and like hold her by her back. And you're like, we're going to torture your dolls in front of you. <laughs> and so then he would like, <laughs> blow them up and so when you'd squeeze the stomach they'd poop out smoke or like him and his friends would take all my dolls and all the other younger sister dolls around the neighborhood and like tie them up on the back of their bicycles and ride around the neighborhood and we'd be like no give us our babies back and they'd be like slamming them into trees and shit and he used to take my dollhouse and when my parents weren't home he would do two things, melt all my trolls in the microwave and so it would just be a pile of hair and a gem and then I know and then he would take my dollhouse <laughs> and do controlled burns outside. Like he thought he was a fireman. And so he'd like light <laughs> each room on fire and then like put them out and like controlled burns. So by the time I lit my comforter on fire by accident, I didn't know what to do. But I, I don't think I could tell my mom that either. I was just like convinced her that I needed to get a new comforter for something. <laughs> oh my just God. The evidence, but I couldn't throw out the whole comforter. So. <laughs> that is so funny. Also, yeah. like the discovery of incense. Like, I remember when I discovered incense. Changed and my life. I thought I was, yeah, I thought I was, like, so cool. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, burning incense. Like, so hip. And, like, such a hippie, like, cool Right, because I wasn't to allowed do. to smoke, but I was allowed to use the lighter for a vat, you know? Yeah. Even though I was totally Definitely. picking up. Did you do that? Did you pick up cigarettes off the floor and smoke them as a okay. kid? Okay. First and foremost, that's so gross. And secondly, you're the second person <laughs> On the podcast, who has mentioned that? I think it was Luke. I believe it was Luke who said they used to go behind like um, stores and yep. pick up and smoke. Oh, y'all yeah. are nasty. Yo, they shoved it down our throats though with like the candy cigarettes, that 90s cigarette uh -huh. advertising, like Joe Camel. I used to collect yeah. Camel Bucks. I wasn't even smoking. I would just like parents, friends that would smoke. I would like, can I have your Joe Camel Cool Bucks? Because I want to get a backpack. You know, all that bullshit. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm going to smoke yeah. when I'm older. Yeah, Different man. times, man. Different so times. I was just, you know, in the park picking up butts. Oh. Don't worry about I it. Mean, 
honestly, all things considered, you turned out pretty awesome and you keep evolving as a human, as a creator um, and as a friend. And I am so grateful for you. Thank you for taking the time to come on here. And for those people that don't know where to find you, can you tell us where to find you all over socials and what you have coming up that we can be excited for? Sure. Well, um, right now I am focusing on doing like trauma informed media consulting. Um, so if there's anyone out there that is working with projects that has to do with true crime or true crime victims or anything along those, whether you're a writer, director, producer, whatever, and you would like some education on how to be a little bit more trauma informed, how not to re-traumatize mm -hmm. the people you're working with, things like that, um, you can look me up. I'm doing that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm at Jesse But If You Go on Instagram. Um, my website's jessiebutafugo.com. You, you know. Look for me doing some like TED talking, some inspirational talks here and there. Maybe yes. a woman show down the pipeline, memoir. She's got goals. But for right now, I'm just earning a master's degree in psychology. That's all. Just <laughs> just doing that. Just, just do that little that thing. Out. Oh, my God. You're amazing. Also, we have to talk about this Casey Anthony thing. We'll have to talk about that soon. That they made a whole. Uh, I feel like they're glorifying. They're giving her like a, a I platform. Think it's a Yes, yeah, they we are. don't want to give platforms to perpetrators in 2023. That's something we, we don't want to do anymore. We that gotta... ain't for me in 2023. 2023. <laughs> <laughs> so I could do this all day long. And in fact, I'm lucky enough to get to because you're my best friend. I love but you. Uh, thank you for sharing your time. Love you. And uh, we'll talk soon. Ciao. Love ya. Boy, did we have fun. I've never done an outro without my mom, so I can't be like, hey, mom, wasn't that fun? She'd be like, ah, oh, that was great. Jesse B is hysterical, but it would have gone something like that. Uh, I hope that you guys very much enjoy the show. If you want to interact with us, there's so many ways you can do that. My whole podcast team at Human Content Pods is over on Instagram and TikTok. They're delightful. We can interact there. Uh, guys, I that you're right. I did say TikTok. I, you didn't think I was on TikTok, but I am via at human content pods. Look how hip I am. Uh, you can also head over to our website, like I said earlier, at ungroundablepodcast.com to interact uh, in all sorts of ways. Also, I want to give a special shout out to a listener who took the time to head over to YouTube, which on Mondays, I put up clips of the podcast. If you didn't already know, head over there, subscribe, do all that stuff. Uh, and V on YouTube took the time to write perfect choice for a co-host. Ah, miss my mama. Uh, obviously, where you get your sense of humor as well as your laugh and your smile and uh, amen and cheers to that. Thank you, Envy, for taking the time to do that. Uh, also, guys, like I mentioned earlier, we're on Patreon. There's tons of cool perks like bonus episodes uh, with me and my husband, Jeff. Uh, a hangout with the Ungroundable member community. People are over there act, uh, active, leaving comments. I like to post pictures. It's a good time. So head on over there. That is patreon.com slash ungroundable podcast. Today on Patreon Roulette, we just wanted to give a special shout out to Juan Al Amita, who, by the way, won. First of all, thank you so much for your donation and for subscribing over there uh, on Patreon. But also, we give you like a hardcore shout out throughout the last episode of Sidebar. So hope you enjoy that. Thank you, Juan Alameda. You rule. Uh, that's it for now, you guys. I'm your host, Lisa Schwartz. And uh, my mommy, Jen Schwartz, is here in spirit. Special thanks to my most lovely dear friend and our guest today, Jessica Badafuco. Our executive producers are me, Lisa Schwartz, Aaron Corney, Rob Goldman, and Shanti Brooke. Our editor and engineer is Jason Portizo. Our music is by Omer Benzvi, and our theme song is performed by the amazing Leah Donovan Jones. This is Ungroundable with Lisa Schwartz, and it is a human content production. Boop, 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 boop. I high fived myself. <laughs>